respected dr v gopal sir all the all the faculty members who are present in the session and all the students uh, welcome to the third day of national webinar of translation of research to practice today we have uh, dr gopal sir uh, eminent speaker principal uh, uh, mother teresa pg and research institute in medical sciences we are very fortunate to have you here sir our principal have been talking about you and uh, your lectures sir. we are uh, really looking forward uh, to hear from you sir today so i'll uh, forward i'll forward to students to please introduce the guest sir. good morning everyone i'm ashish we of fourth farm d it is my honor to introduce our today's guest dr v gopal sir is a professor head of the department of pharmacognosy principal college of pharmacy in charge school of indian systems of medicine in charge of ayush drug testing lab and academic registrar sir completed his b farm in 1990 from government college of pharmacy bangalore his m farm in 1992 from lm college of pharmacy ahmedabad gujarat His PhD in 1996 from Gujarat University, Ahmedabad, Gujarat. Dr. B. Gopal also had an MBA degree in Education Management from Alagappa University, Karaykudi, Tamil Nadu, and PG DCA from Alagappa University, Karaykudi, Tamil Nadu. Dr. B. Gopal received multiple awards from National Best Teacher Award in 2017, Eminent Teacher Award 2020, Outstanding Community Service Award in 2019. and achievement award for excellence in pharmacy education sir's professional achievements include central council member in pharmacy council of india and convener of education regulations committee and member of ethics committee of the pci dr v gopal is a member of all india board of pharmaceutical education and all india council of technical education new delhi sir is elected as a member of national managing body of the indian red cross society IRCS and nominated as a member of disaster management committee and medical maternity and child welfare committee from 2013 to 2017 sir is a life member of IPA ISTE ABDI and IPGA sir is handling classes for the past 29 years at all the levels of pharmacy education sir is an approved guide for phd studies in nine universities 26 phd scholars have been awarded doctor degree under his guidance dr b gopal is chairman board of studies for ug pg and member of affiliations committee for, for pondicherry university sir published a book entitled good agriculture practice for the Medi medicinal and aromatic plants of pondicherry now i request sir to take over the session happy morning to one and all am i audible yes sir yes sir uh, am i visible yes sir shall i start my uh, screen sharing yes sir 
Is my slides visible? Yes, sir. Visible. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy morning to one and all. At the outset, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the principal and to the beautiful team of uh, teaching faculty of Sri Vishnu College of Pharmacy. Thank you for the nice introduction. And I wish all the participants a very happy and a prosperous Sunday. Sorry, Saturday. My dear participants, Next one hour, I would like to share my experience in translating herbal research to practice. Today, translating research to practice is very important. Today morning, I faced one problem. Today morning, I was woke up by one of our faculty saying that he has received a mail from me that I am in some difficult situation and I need help. And I had requested him to mail me immediately. So this is the morning wake up call that I got. And then immediately I told him, I have not sent mail to anybody. And from that onwards, there was a series of phone calls from various uh, corners of uh, my friend's circle. Uh, they are all come with the same message. We have received a mail from you. And uh, this is the content. Uh, so then I had to make a complaint to Google support. And uh, I had put it in my status that my mail has been hacked and somebody else is sending mail. So please don't respond. And please block that ID. Uh, so I had put it in my status and I had to put it in all my WhatsApp group. Now, here there is a problem in translating research to practice. Because of research, got very beautiful communication devices, email, WhatsApp, Facebook. But this research, when it has been put to practice, in translating them, there are some problems, problem like what I faced today. So translating research to practice has to be in the proper sense. Today, we have a war scenario in some parts of the world. People are doing research on biological warfare. So this research has to be for the welfare of the human community. It cannot be deteriorating the human community. When we are translating a herbal research to practice, that herbal research should be towards cure and it should not have any tags attached, like for example, profit. In English, there are two beautiful words. One is called discover and another one is called research. In nature, some you remove the cover that is called discover. That is research. You search, you will find out how to remove that cover. You search again, you will be able to explore more. So the more you do research, you search again and again. The more you do research, you will be ending into an era of endless frontiers. Sir, can you please put that in uh, slide, slide share mode, sir? View mode. Is it okay? Yes, sir. It, uh, Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, so, my dear participants, today uh, we will see about my very good friend, Padma Shri Pushpangadan. He was a director of Tropical Botanical Research Center in Trivandrum. And uh, along with his team, he was climbing Agastya Hills for the purpose of carrying out research on the medicinal plants on Agastya Hills. When he was climbing to the top of the hill, 
for breath. He was not able to breathe properly because he was climbing the hill. He was accompanied by some of the local tribal people to guide him. And those local tribal people, they were not panting for breath. They were uh, just normal, even while climbing a hill. So this observation of Dr. Pushpangadan made him ask the tribal people, uh, I'm also climbing the hill, you're also climbing the hill. In fact, you are having more luggage with you, water bottles, food, and all the equipments. And I'm climbing uh, empty handed, but I, I'm, uh, I'm gasping for breath. I'm not able to uh, breathe properly. I'm very tired. I'm not able to climb. But uh, you are not feeling the tiredness. You are not gasping for breath. You are breathing normally. How is it? So the tribal people said, uh, there is one plant here that is called Arogya Pacha. So when we are climbing the hill, we used to take the leaves and then we used to keep it in our mouth and we used to masticate it. The more we masticate it, the more energetic we will feel. So we will not feel tired. We will not be panting. We will not be uh, gasping for breath. Then Dr. Pushpang, then, uh, can you give me a sample? Can you show me that plant? They showed him the plant. They gave him uh, some of the leaves. So he also placed it on his mouth. And immediately, he had a relief. And slowly, he was back to normal. So after he went to the top of the hill, he collected a lot of the plants and then he came back to his laboratory and he has done a lot of research on this plant, Trichopus xylanicus. It is called as Arogya Pacha. And he has found that this plant has excellent adaptogenic activity. So with that, he published a few papers, but immediately he went for patenting. And he has patented various active molecules from this plant, Trichopus xylanicus, and whatever uh, he has uh, patented, he has commercialized it. And by commercializing his patent, he has got a lot of money. And first time in India, all the money that he has got from commercialization of the patent, he has given it back to the tribals because it was these tribals who has introduced him to this plant, Arogya Pacha, called Trichopus xylanicus. And for this work, he has got Padma Shri. So here, there is a beautiful translation of research to practice. That is why I started my lecture with uh, a paper clipping, especially Dr. Pushpangala. You can see his photograph here. Today, many people, they get patent. The other day I was speaking with one patent officer, he said, in academics, everybody is nowadays applying for a patent. And then I asked him, is this patent commercialized? No, it is not being commercialized. Today, everybody is patenting for various reasons. But the patent has to be commercialized and it has to be commercialized in the proper perspective. Doing research on herbal medicine is not that easy. Some 20 years back, in the herbal market, everywhere, diabetic cup was available. It was a wooden cup made from Petrocarpus marsupium. So you'll have to pour water into that cup. Next day morning, when you look at that water, there will be some fluorescence. You'll have to drink that water. And uh, the belief and a few research papers told that the diabetes can be cured by that. It is because of one compound, L. epicatechin. But products that came into the market from Petrocarpus marsupium based on L. epicatechin, they all disappeared just like that. So here, search and research is very important. There was a period when the entire Herbal research was shaken by one compound, polypeptide P. So from Momordica charantia, they had isolated a polypeptide called polypeptide P and it was called as herbal insulin. And it was claimed that it would cure diabetes. Again, it all disappeared from herbal drug research. 
so doing research on herbal medicine is very very important and has to be done with utmost care because in herbs we have biological variation usually neem tree is bitter but there is one place called dakur in gujarat where the neem trees are the leaf is sweet geographical variation we have read that the cinchona tree on the top of a hill will have quinine tree in the valley in the plain will not have quinine geographical variation in herbal medicine the most popular and most documented biological variation is seasonal variation in the flowering season usually in the plant the active ingredients would be more in the summer season it would be less after a rain it will be less so there is a seasonal variation there is an ontogenic variation in many biological sources we should uh, we have we could have read that the plant should be collected from minimum 2 year old plants so the young plant will not have the secondary metabolite that is responsible for the activity so the age of the plant is very important ontogenic variation geographic variation the place where the plant grows that is very important in a dumping yard in a polluted environment if the medicinal plant grows then uh, the pollution will trigger various pathways expected phytoconstituent would not be present in that plant so while doing research on plants it is very very important that is why we have current good collection practices so when we collect a plant we should be very very cautious so here from the story of dr pushpangadan case study we have beautifully understood how herbal drug has to be translated from research to practice i request all the young researchers the students who are watching this program to please google do data mining on the research of dr pushpangadan and derive inspiration from his research work i am showing you one slide this is a slide of dr getafase dr getafase was a person who was doing research on aromatic plants basically he had a perfume industry and uh, he was collecting one various plants and he was making it as a perfume and he was commercializing it he was selling it one day when he was filling the volatile oil from lavender into small small ampules to sell it and he was sealing the ampules in a naked flame he was diluting the oil with an organic solvent there was a small accident the organic solvent fell over the fire and in the process some organic solvent spilled over his forearm and immediately the fire caught on his arm his whole arm was burning so out of impulse he immersed his hand into lavender oil that was available nearby and then he was thinking he was supposed to get married shortly and uh, if uh, he has his hand has burned so there will be a scar so how will he show his hand to his would be when she wears the wedding ring it look at ugly what will i do so he was worried and he was standing for a long time immersing his hand in lavender oil and then one of his friend I mean, what are you doing here? He said, "My hat got burnt." Then immediately we should go to the doctor. Come, 
So he removed his hand from the lavender oil. His hand was perfect. There was no burns, no scar, nothing. Then his friend saw his hand and then he said, hey, it's perfectly normal. And you say that uh, your hand had burned. Were you in some hallucination? So he immediately did a bit of data mining and then he found that lavender oil can be used as a first aid for burns. Then he has done a lot of research on volatile oils and aromatic compounds from plants and he has come out with a beautiful science that is called as aroma therapy. So this research by Dr. Getafosse has been beautifully translated and it has been commercialized and it has made him as the father of aroma therapy. Today in the Western world, for stress management, this aromatherapy is very, very beneficial. A lot of research has been done. So this translation of research is very, very important. And for that, keen observation, perfect documentation, and innovative research. So this is all is required for translating research into practice. So I'm giving you here the second example of Dr. Getafosse, who has successfully translated his research to practice. And many people around the world have been benefited by his research. The third example I'm going to show you is the research done by Dr. Samuel Hanneman, the founder of homeopathy. Dr. Samuel Hanneman is a German physician. He's an allopath. He is a modern physician. So he came across an information that in South America, the tribals are using the bark of cinchona as a cure for malaria, especially for the elite people, that is a tribal king and his family and relatives. Jesuit priests have information from the tribals of South America and they have propagated this bark of cinchona, cinchona calicea, cinchona ledgeriana, cinchona saxirobra, and cinchona officinalis as a cure for malaria. Now, this information fascinated. Dr. Samuel Hanneman and he had done research on this bark. He himself has consumed this bark and he developed the symptoms of malaria. He thought about it for a long period of time. He has learned that a malarial patient, when he takes the bark, he becomes normal. Samuel Hanneman was a healthy person, healthy volunteer. He had taken the bath, he develops the symptoms of malaria. So with this, he came out with a beautiful phenomenon, like cures like. That is called the simila simile cure and drum. And he became the father of homeopathy. The one set of experiments that he performed in his stage, in his days, has, fo has formed the foundation, strong foundation for homeopathy system of medicine, which has now been adopted by India as its Indian During this COVID-19, we had an arsenic album distributed by even the government of uh, Pondicherry, government of Tamil Nadu as a profile access for COVID-19. For allergy, for uh, pediatric problems, homeopathy is claimed to have been doing wonders. And it all started by translating herbal research to practice. So here I have given you three beautiful examples where translating herbal research to practice has been done. When we are translating a herbal research to practice, we have to be very, very cautious. In Tamil Nadu, there is a place called Dharmaburi. So in Dharmaburi, there was a king called Adiyamon. Adiyamon 
was gifted with a gooseberry by a great Tamil saint called Avvayar. So there, gooseberry is introduced as an antioxidant, as an anti-aging, immunity booster, onwards in Siddha system of medicine and in Ayurveda system of medicine, gooseberry, phylanthus, is being taken by the common man as a nutraceutical. This gooseberry is very much rich in vitamin C. So excellent antioxidant activity. It has various flavonoids. So anti-aging. It has a lot of active molecules that boost the immunity. And this gooseberry is not available throughout the year. So for those regions where this gooseberry is not available, they came up with a formulation. This formulation they developed and they, uh, what you call, Tyler made it because they believed that vitamin C is stable in a lipid medium. So they have formulated it into the form of a legium. It is a semi-solid preparation with the jaggery, honey, and lipids, ghee. So, in Siddha system of medicine, it is called as Nellikai Legium. The same was propagated by an Ayurvedic saint called Chavan. So, it is also like this. In that, there are 46 ingredients. So, it is called as Chavan Prash. And this Chavan Prash is an immunity booster during this COVID-19. It was helping the people in boosting their immunity because of its vitamin C content and it was very effective. Now, in the market, suddenly there was a growth of Chavan Prash biscuits. Here I am not showing you Chavan Prash biscuit. I was not able to get its photograph. I am showing you a normal biscuit. The reason why this Chavan Prash biscuit became a mega hit was Legium unit dose dispensing is very difficult. It sticks to your hand and usually in Ayurveda you will have to take it in the night one spoonful with the warm milk. So the unit dose dispensing of Chavan Prash was difficult. It used to stick to your teeth and to overcome this they had come out with the biscuit of Chavan Prash and when this biscuit was analyzed, it was found to not have vitamin C. So the whole concept of Chavan Prash was preserving the vitamin C content. Just for a patient compliance to a biscuit and in the biscuit if vitamin C is not there, then what is the fun in taking that uh, pseudo modernization of the traditional formulation. So here research has not been properly translated to practice. And this biscuit had become a failure. Now people are again back with Chavan Prash later. So modernization of traditional systems of medicine is always recommended and advocated. But it should be in the right form. Any small modification in the traditional system of medicine, then it becomes a new entity. And research has to be done for it. My dear friends, in yester years, we were brushing our teeth with the help of neem twig. In Tamil, we have a beautiful proverb. Alum velum palvik urdi. So the neem twig was used as a toothbrush. So with the help of a neem twig, you can brush teeth by uh, one tooth by one tooth. You cannot brush all the teeth, just like we do with the help of a modern brush. In those days, people used to go for a walk, they used to break a neem twig. And then they used to brush each teeth by each tooth. One, one tooth you'll have to brush. And then they used to remove the outer, uh, what you call bark. If you can peel it just like that. And it was used as a dental floss. And it was used for cleaning the tongue. And afterwards it was thrown away. It was used and thrown. So uh, today a lot of research has proved that the fresh juice of neem to eat. They kill the water-causing microorganism in the buccal cavity. 
and the aged people in case if neem twig is not available they were going for meshwak meshwak twig if meshwak twig is also not available they used to brush their teeth with the help of the god given toothbrush the four finger salt and the charcoal charcoal is the best adsorbent so any odor causing microorganism food particles everything was adsorbed and it was thrown out and salt it is the best antiseptic best toothpaste that was available now uh, slowly research started coming in and then they said that you brushing by uh, the four finger or brushing by neem twig meshwa twig is not that scientific so you they invented the tooth brush with that of the brush we brush the teeth but we call it as a tooth brush and uh, initially they might have taught us how to brush our teeth the right brushing technique but today we are all wrongly brushing this is not the way to brush this is the way to brush and then there was introduction of toothpaste and then tooth cream and then gel all that have come in and today what is advertisement does your tooth paste have have salt does your tooth paste have charcoal so this is advertisement 100 years back we were brushing our teeth with salt we were made to forget that and now they are asking us does your tooth paste have salt 100 years back we were making use of neem meshwa charcoal we were made to forget all that and then today again the question is neem toothpaste meshwa toothpaste does your toothpaste have charcoal my dear friends here the translation of research to practice has gone wrong that is why we are going into one full circle so this care of when profit takes the driver seat ethics takes the back seat today in many cases research is driven by profit your profit driven research is waste it is a harm to our community so my dear pharmacy people the people who do research for the purpose of our community for the wellness of our community the pharmacognosis who do research on herbs to save the community to cure the community not to manage the community today uh, manage the disease today research is done to manage the disease the, the disease should be kept under control but once we stop using the medicine it should again bloom nobody is worried about cure everybody is worried only about management so this type of research will not get translated into the proper form so please take note of it if you come to tamil nadu down south you can find in many houses they tie one underground uh, modification uh, a big rhizome in front of their home in tamil it is called as agasa garuda in tamil it is called as agasa garuda corona corpus epigius in those days this underground com uh, i don't know we uh, have to do a bit more research it was used as an antidote for snake bite you can uh, do a bit of data mining initial research has clearly proved that this underground part of this plant corella corpus epigius is having antidote activity against snake poison so this corella corpus epigius roots and rhizomes they were tied in the front of every house so that it was easily accessible in those days uh, torch lights street lights were not available so people who walk they might tiptoe over a, uh, a sleeping snake and the snake may bite them so a first aid has to be available so for a instant first aid they started using uh, this uh, root part of corolla corpus epigius it was tied to the doors of every house but slowly that habit left off that is okay uh, but doing more research on this plant would have been fruitful instead of just in this practice south indians breakfast 
is old rice. In Tamil, we call it as parayadu. So the rice that has been cooked the previous day night is soaked in water and in the next day morning, they take that rice. So when a rice, a cooked rice is soaked in, is soaked in water, then there is growth of yeast. So when yeast grows in water, then it makes, uh, in, uh, when yeast grows in water, in which rice has been dipped, then uh, that rice becomes so easily digestible and the very good nutritional value of that rice, the bioavailability increases. And so that rice becomes easily assimilable, digestible, bioabsorbable, and it, it, it was a very good breakfast in those days. But over a period of time, people discontinued for the simple reason, if you take cooked rice and put it in water next day morning, you get a bad smell. The reason is there is no growth of yeast. Why there is no growth of yeast? Because of pesticide resistance. In those days, rice was cultivated, the cultivation was organic. Because the cultivation was organic, there was no pesticides used, there was growth of yeast. But today, because of the use of pesticides, there is no growth of yeast. Because there is no growth of yeast, the habit of uh, eating this old rice as a breakfast has been lost. My dear friends, today, if you go to a place called Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu, there are traditional hotels where they sell this old rice and the cost is exorbitant. For one pot full of old rice and water, you have to shell out 100 rupees. So, my dear friends, this research that we have done research that rice, when it is cooked and when it is soaked in water overnight, there is growth of yeast. And because of that, that rice becomes more digestible. The bioavailability of the ingredients of rice is easily available, increases. So, all that research has been lost because of pesticide recipe. Now, the demand for organic rice is increasing and now the demand for the old rice that means or organic rice cooked and soaked in water overnight uh, and then given that demand is increasing so here again and again they have been searching and they have done good research but while translating it there has been a problem so we need to settle it and uh, hopefully the time will take care of it and in the near future we will be having more organic rice and uh, almost this uh, having the habit of old rice in the early morning as a breakfast breaking the fast with the help of this uh, uh, will come back in the near future food poisoning is very common Today in many homes, the kitchen has been smashed by online delivery of cooked food. So when bulk cooking is being done, there are always chances that there could be a food poison. And in those days, to find out the food poison, they were relying on two things. One is crow. So before eating, they used to first feed the crow. And if the crow is healthy, they used to have their food. Next is they used to throw the food in fire. It was called as yetna, that is giving it to the god. And in case if there is a poison in the food, the color of the flame uh, will change. So it was gas chromatography principle. So based on that, they used to find out if the food is poisoned. Taxus species, which gave rise to taxol, is now endangered. The number of Ashoka trees is coming down. We have done a lot of research on the active ingredients of taxa species. We have done a lot of research on the active ingredients of Ashoka, but propagating of this both trees, that is cultivation and propagation. So in that we have made a mistake. The number of Ashoka trees in India has come down. The number of taxa species in India has drastically come down. 
it is because of ruthless exploitation of these two trees so research to propagate these trees is very important india was the leader number 1 in sandalwood production but now that rank is lost so we should do research to propagate such important trees sandalwood tree ashoka bark taxa species so because they are very much beneficial by the time we recognize the importance of this herbs the herb is not available these active ingredients cannot be synthesized in the lab because it is very complex if it is simple it can be done it is very complex and in one tree there are number of active ingredients present so they all work on synergism so doing research on these type is very very important i'm sorry is my slide changing Hello? still in sir uh, still in that ashoka bark slide sir oh the slide is not changing hmm. yeah in karnataka there was a small village called hulikal this was a virgin area where there were rare flora and fauna to protect the flora and fauna of hulikal panchayat there was a belief that when you go to the place in the night or in the evening or in the afternoon you will be hit by some divine force you are permitted to go to that area only in the morning and that too as a group and that too only for worshiping there was a temple there we call it as ayanar ayanar temple so this belief was there among the people that you should not enter into that restricted area a dense forest and thereby the forest was protected now in the name of science people started entering it people started leaving it and then they found that nothing happened so then they said it was a superstition and then they started constructing hotels putting in electricity tar road and now uh, that hill top the dense forest it has become a normal garden and now in that dense forest there was a perennial spring there was a fresh water spring and the water from that spring was very tasty now slowly when the trees were cut and uh, for the beautiful climate and for the forest when uh, many guest houses were built all the rare uh, animals they ran away very rare trees were cut off in the name of road electricity cottages restaurants and when these trees were removed the perennial spring from that area that has dried up and now there is no water so people have left that place and they have come back now a dense forest that was preserved for more than 12000 years has been demolished in just 40 years in the name of science see uh, the, the belief that a divine power will come and hit you if you if you encroach into that area that believe may be that belief may be superstitious but that belief was made just for preserving nature 
so that we were not able to understand and we have demolished for ever now the water can never come in that spring again similarly uh, near chittu uh, there was a beautiful temple where there used to be a nandi and from the mouth of the nandi water used to come now people started uh, uh, putting bore wells and once this bore wells became very popular they started uh, some fruit industries nearby uh, and uh, so they had they wanted lot of water they had put bore wells now from the mouth of the nandi the water is not there and this bore wells supplied water for some time and now that entire area is dried up so uh, uh, research when it is being translated into practice uh, sometimes it becomes so negative to the community the community suffers so we need to be very careful in these aspects we were the first to use anesthesia in surgery thanks to shushruta we were the first to use suturing thanks to shushruta so we were the first to say that if you are a human being you can suffer from 4400 ease thanks to the siddha system of medicine so in our 4448 disease listed by the siddha system of medicine one third of it one third of siddha system of medicine is only for profile access disease prevention and then one third is for cure the siddha system of medicine doesn't speak about management but today we speak only about management in those days medicine was given for free a physician is not supposed to charge his patients for medicine and therefore when medicines were given for free free it was given with love and when it was given with love uh, there was proper quality there was no adulteration no substitution because it was given for free now when medicine is given for money as i said when profit is taking the driver seat ethics takes the back seat now with the money only you can buy medicine so when you are buying medicine for more profit it is being adulterated it is being substituted we have to come out with quality control parameters and even if we have quality control parameters again they try to fool us now we have come out with bar markers biomarkers but uh, uh, they uh, take this marker and then they add it into the formulation instead of adding the plant so now we have to go for multiple markers so then this uh, they will find out one more method so unless and until the intention is changed then uh, there is no uh, what do you call uh, end to it in sanskrit there is a beautiful word amantaram aksharam nasti nasti moolam aushadam the meaning is each and every plant has a medicinal property only thing is we don't uh, understand it in those days we were having lemon juice today in many outlets this lemon juice is mixed with flavor enhancers taste enhancers and in some places without lemon they prepare lemon juice only with taste enhancers flavor agents same is the case with mint pudina uh, if you go to uh, maharashtra they have a drink called mojdo that is made up of mint it is very good initially it started like that so it was just mint and soda and ginger this was used now uh, it is all artificial flavors so initially it was a nutraceutical it was good for our health now it is all chemicals and most of them are not uh, approved uh, chemicals and dyes so it is harmful to our health the adulteration in fruits like for example apple they polish it with wax that wax is harmful uh, grapes they just spray it with pesticides so the pesticides stay on the skin of grapes so if it is not properly washed it will give you a lot of problem banana 
So it is sprayed with so much of pesticide. In those days, uh, they were eating the banana skin also. But now eating banana itself, uh, we have to be very careful. So we need to go for a proper outlet. So uh, pesticides everywhere. This is one rhinoceros beetle. To remove this rhinoceros beetle, they used to just sieve sand and they used to put it on the coconut tree crops. So when this rhinoceros beetle goes to eat the tender shoots, the fine sand goes in between the head and the, the uh, thorax and uh, it creates friction and thereby the beetle die. But today to overcome this rhinoceros beetle, uh, they are using uh, a pesticide that will spoil the entire coconut tree and for next to six months it is not safe to drink the tender coconut water from that tree. So that is a harmfulness. In those days we were making use of plantain leaf as our plate. So on plantain tree leaf we have a wax coating and this wax coating is antimicrobial. No fungus, no virus, no bacteria. So it was biodegradable. You eat in that and then you throw it. But today we are eating in uh, plastic uh, uh, sheets called computer banana leaf or uh, it's a, a non-biodegradable uh, what you call plates, especially during marriages, during functions, when thousands of people come and eat in one place. When it is banana leaf, it is biodegradable. When you make use of a plastic leaf, uh, then uh, it is non-biodegradable and it is harmful to our environment. In South India, we had the habit of using the bitter leaf. It was a very good digestant. But somehow this habit was left off. And today, many people are having problems in digestion. In India, we had this. Uh, so it was said that it is to ward off evil. No, actually, it is a first aid box. Uh, the first one you see that is alum. Alum for cuts, burns, and nicks. Next one is for lemon, a lemon and the chili. It is for a poisonous insect bite. And then the thorn for removing thorn, and then turmeric as an antiseptic, disinfectant, and then uh, coconut as a, uh, what they call, when um, somebody is having hypoglycemia, they used to take coconut in those days. So this was a first aid box in the entrance of every home, but it has translated into uh, uh, to ward of evil spirits, and it has been now discontinued. So we were always aiming for cure and now we have come down for management. When anybody used to travel in those days, they used to make use of ginger. The shape of ginger is the shape of human stomach and it aids in digestion. It is and it's very beneficial in overcoming motion sickness. But uh, all these good habits are left off. Sweet potato. It's having a very good glycemic index, so it was beneficial to diabetes. Now, because it is sweet, it is said that diabetic people should not eat it. And uh, when we take sweet potato and uh, when we just rub it with the help of a cotton ball, you can find that the sweet potato for appearance is being smeared with rhodamine B. So everywhere there is substitution, contamination, gray market, tampering, mislabeling, Unapproved enhancements, overruns, counterfeiting, dilution. So, the research done on plants is getting wasted. Pepper looks like COVID-19 uh, virus. This like, looks like coronavirus. And it has been said to have excellent antimicrobial activities. But the pepper, when you powder it, uh, it has a black color. So, many people don't like black. So they soak pepper in water and then they remove the outer skin and then they call it as white pepper and it was used. So now this white pepper is not as effective as black pepper. So all such research done for patient compliance has made the original product weak. The benefits of garlic is being lost in those days, everyday night, once they cross the age of 40, they used to have garlic daily. So uh, the bad cholesterol in the body was removed. But today this habit is now lost. But again, for uh, cardiac patients, 
uh, an oil prepared, prepared from garlic is being prescribed. But it is always better to take the whole garlic as such or boiled in milk. So that would be beneficial. So I have shared some of my thoughts on translating herbal research to practice. I thank the organizers for this wonderful opportunity and I thank the participants for their wonderful involvement. I wish you a great day ahead. Thank you one and all. Thank you very much, sir. So uh, the session was really lively and uh, we could learn new things and very relevant to our uh, uh, title of our uh, webinar, sir. Thank you so thank much, you, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. The uh, topic is open for discussion. So, any participants? Uh, yes. Uh, can we have, uh, with the permission of the organizers, this is Professor Dr. Gantan. I'm audible. Please, sir. Yes, yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Because uh, I, every time, whenever I come across Dr. Ravi Gopal's webinar, I make it mandatory to attend. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. There is a lot of research. Even though I have a lot of information, it adds, uh, adds on to the knowledge. Uh, that is a very good information. And today, Dr. B. Gopal, who is a very friend, very good friend of mine, has given an excellent presentation. And particularly for the students, it will be very much useful. He has given a lot of information. I am audible and wish you video is uh, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sir, thank I, you I much, remember sir. When, I was, when I was six or seven years younger, there used to be wrestling in India, particularly in India, there were some Tara Singh and uh, uh, King Kong. You know? yes, so they used to fight, and the King Kong will win, he'll be very fat. So he used to, after the winning, he used to eat the badam. You know? Okay, and then badam for health. And then uh, uh, he used to, for brushing teeth, he used charcoal. So though I remember those, the, the Colgate company was selling for uh, body, you are taking badam, badam. And, ah. for badam, and for teeth, you are taking charcoal. Ah. So they were promoting that way. Now <laughs> the opposite has taken place. And rightly said that uh, charcoal, fine charcoal is a very good uh, adjourbent. It removes all the toxins from the body. So that is why now the Colgate, same Colgate, has come out with Colgate charcoal. So this is the translation of uh, I mean, our herbal product for human benefit. This is one example I want to share to the students. And uh, there is nowadays uh, diabetes is increasing many fold. So people are going for aspartame, saccharine, sucralose. And uh, for the benefit, with the permission of my colleague, Dr. Vigopal, there is a candy leaf. We call it stevia. It is available uh -huh. in the mysteria, yes, which yes. is uh, very useful. 200 to 250 times more sweeter than the sugar. Sure. sugar. So that is also, the students they can make note of it, uh, stevia, they call it candy leaf. So it is very much useful. And another one is the cat whiskers. That is I mean, nutraceuticals. They are, I'm telling nature suticals. Pharmaceuticals, which is made from natural sources. Cat viscous, which is orthosiphon staminus. It is available in the form of granules. It is marketed in Malaysia in the form of granules. They dissolve these granules uh, and then they drink it. It has got anti-diabetic, anti-hypertensive, and above all, anti-inflammatory. It was very popular during the COVID-19 season. A very popular drink. And it is very available in, in the nature surgical. It is there in Malaysia. One of my colleague has given information to me. I'm passing on. And, and finally, before I conclude, Palansoru, Palesoru, we call it in Tamil. Uh, those days, we used to soak the uh, rice, which is left out. We make more rice, in fact. We make more rice and then soak the rice in the water. And tomorrow, next day morning, we take it with red onion, small red onion and green chili. So as I learned, this uh, soaked rice has got a la lot of nutrient value and the uh, red onion, chinnavangayam, it has got a lot of anti-inflammatory activity and red chili has got, uh, it has got another anti-inflammatory activity. 
so people are uh, using this and they are very hale and healthy so this these are the few informations i love to add this nature suticals is nutraceutical for I mean, food products is very much useful only thing is as rightly said by our uh, my colleague dr vigopal the profit should not be the motive research has to go to the society in a very i mean uh, beneficial way so this is for the kind of information for uh, students because pharmacognosy is the source of many medicines particularly for treatment of anti hypertensive rahul fear serpentina for uh, that is for anti hypertensive like that and uh, digitoxin there are many things are available so pharmacognosy students and particularly pharmacies uh, uh, they say pharmacognosy most of the pharmacy people they make our natural product for research and development they find out and use it so this is my small uh, i mean experience i am sharing to the students and our faculty members we can work on these areas and give the benefit for the young generation so thank you very much dr gopal sir for ah, thank you sir thank you sir thank you for thank you, thank you. thank you okay. and thank you organizers of sri vishnu college of pharmacy thank you very much goodbye hand over the floor to the organizers thank you sir thank you sir in the chat box there is one question raised by shravani adiraju could you please repeat the point how yagna helped in detecting food poisoning sir as i said in our chemistry lab we used to do flame test we used to take the compound with the help of a glass rod and we used to introduce into the flame and seeing the change in the color of the flame we used to detect so similarly in those days the food that is prepared was uh, put into fire and any change in the color of the flame they were able to detect whether it was food poisoned or whether it was so that is how it was done so thank you very much thanks for your interest in this session thank you so one more participant aishwarya lakshmi uh, raised her hands any doubt yeah. madam any query uh, madam okay sir so one more uh, point is sir uh, so uh, one from the U- youtube stream they are asking if uh, students who are interested in uh, plant research or herbal research can get any uh, internships in universities or uh, national university or some so some universities like that yeah uh, if you are interested to do research on herbal drugs there are lot of places Like for example uh, uh, indian pharmacopoeia laboratory itself has a program for that they will teach you how to write a monograph and they will train you accordingly similarly most of the universities uh, 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 based on the area of uh, interest you can approach those universities that apex bodies like for example in cdri in lucknow they have a program where you can go and learn research how to do research on medicinal plants similarly in a uh, cmap you have in nbri you have so uh, uh, rrl some program previously so like that in the lot of places are available so if you are interested to do research on medicinal plants they will guide you how to do it and if anybody is interested please approach me also at my level whatever is best i am trained i am ready to help you but uh, i think that the, uh, most of the m from pharmacognosy students are now going to cdri in lucknow where you can choose uh, what type of research you want to do and accordingly you are trained you can do your research and you can come back uh, in the last time uh, we had a, a beautiful uh, seminar or a seminar a demonstration come seminar on hptlc so we have an ankrom laboratories where you can go for a one day training the training is completely free they teach you how to do hp tlc on herbal extracts uh, and uh, uh, and you can you also do antioxidant activity based on hp tlc research so like this everything is available only thing you have to tap the door all the very best thanks sir thank you so much sir uh, thank you so much for a very relevant uh, and uh, lively session sir thank you over to the students to conclude sir. thank you so much sir it was absolutely an informative session sir uh, on behalf of spcp i thank again dr v gopal for making time for nurturing our students sir thank you everyone for attending the session and making the session successful and the respective feedback feedback links will be sent to your groups thank you sir
webinar had ended thank you thank you so much sir thank you thank you gopal sir ah thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir dr anil kumar sagi sir uh, thank you you are giving me all this uh, time for two three minutes to just add on to my experience thank you very much yes, yesterday also so came much. and today also i come very good program please carry on any help suggestion feel free to contact me i given my number in the chat box thank you sir thank you so okay, much okay i can i contact your colleague dr men sandosh kumar in touch with me i will contact you okay sir. thank you okay sir. thank you thank you sir uh, so we'll end the session